Hey guys, welcome back to Aerial Allegiance. Today we're going to talk a little bit more about the history of aerial arts and kind of how it's evolved throughout the years. I'll be talking about five main apparatuses today. The trapeze, aerial straps, rope, silks, and lira. We'll zero in on these apparatuses individually and see how they got their start in the world and what makes them such a popular apparatus in even today's time. So without further ado, let's get started. First, we'll take a look at trapeze. According to History Today, Jules Lyotard, the French acrobat who performed the first flying trapeze act on record at the Cirque Napoleon in Paris in 1859, was the daring young man who flies through the air with the greatest of ease in the music hall song. Fun fact, Jules's last name, Leotard, is actually where we get the term Leotard from. This is the form-fitting swimsuit-like garment that dancers typically wear. Back to the main act, though. Jules's trapeze show was performed in November with three trapezes. Roughly four to five months after a man had walked across Niagara Falls for the first time on a tightrope. Because of that spectacle in June, daring aerial feats had become all the rage. But Jules had been practicing his flying trapeze act since 1856, when he was just 18 years old. This is three years prior to him ever performing it in front of an audience. I can only imagine how long he had been perfecting that specific routine before he unveiled it to the world. Isn't that crazy? But he would go on to pave the pathway for many more aerialists to come. Fast forward about 52 years and you come to the first time we see an apparatus called aerial straps. Aerial straps are two cotton or nylon straps suspended in the air with a loop at the bottom of each one. This allows for an aerialist to insert a hand or a foot and perform feats of strength and flexibility. This is first seen in the Qing Dynasty, China, in 1911, according to Rolf Gallagher. Aerial rope is also seen for the first time in the early years of the 20th century, although it's not entirely known when the first performance of aerial rope was. According to Kim Barrett on Medium, vertical rope acts such as cord lease and Spanish web used techniques developed by the ancient Indian sport Malakam, which was revived in the 19th century. So based on this knowledge, we can kind of take a good guesstimate, even though we don't know the exact timeline. Now it's time for the good stuff. The one everybody loves and knows in today's time, the aerial silks. To find the first record of that, we have to jump all the way to the 1950s. According to Vertical Wise, an aerial blog, their origins are found around 1959 in a French circuit school where some trainees were asked to make a difference by presenting an acrobatic act. One student presented her act by using a long piece of fabric. Unfortunately, little is known about this performance except for one small account in a local newspaper. Nonetheless, from 1959 until 1998, when aerial silks was officially recognized, a lot of artists had been experimenting with aerial silk in their performances. Despite being, early as, being found as early as 1959 though, like Vertical Wise said, it wasn't until 1998 that silks became widely known across the world, mostly due to Cirque du Soleil. Lastly, in terms of getting started, we have the lira. Another fun fact, although many may believe that the lira was used in P.T. Barnum's circus due to the movie The Greatest Showman, where famous actress Zendaya dons the hoop, there's actually no historical evidence of the aerial hoop being used until about two years after Barnum's death. The first time we see a lira used is in, surprise, another circus act, in 1893. An article is published in the New York Clipper of Seattle the Marvel posing with the aerial hoop. But how have these apparatuses advanced with time? Well, I'll tell you. Trapeze and rope got popular with the rest of the acrobatic circus type acts in the early to mid 2000s. It is unsure when or how they exactly became popular, but it most likely has to do with their relation to silks, straps, and lira, as well as the influence of Cirque du Soleil, which is the turning point for most of these apparatuses. Straps became popular in the 1970s with the Pantolinko brothers headlining the act in many different cities. 
Next, we see that Lyra became popular in this day and age due to circus acts in 2003, but they were gaining traction even before that. According to Kim Barrett again in Medium, in March of 1977, Nancy Giordano debuted an aerial Lyra performance in New York as part of the Royal Hannaford Circus. And again, in 1981, a performer named Yana debuted a Lyra act at the Circus World Park in Florida. Now for Silks, it started gaining popularity in the early 90s, and by the mid-90s, it had taken the world by storm. According to Vertical Wise, in 2002, Acrobat Productions organized the choreographies of BBC TV Aerial Silks Ident, which had been a popular television show for over five years. Wow! A whole segment on BBC TV with Aerial Silk, and it ran for five years. That's crazy. Now, there is a competing theory on how the Silks gained its popularity. Some support the notion that the founder of Aerial Silks is actually a man named Andre Simmer. However, this wouldn't place the founding of Silks until 1987, which is very behind in terms of the rest of the apparatuses, especially for how popular Silks has become. So it doesn't seem to quite line up to me, but I'll let you draw your own conclusions. But keep an eye out, because even though he may not have founded the Aerial Silks, Andre Simmer still made acrobats perform by persuading them not only to use facial expressions, but to focus on body movements so as to express their inner feelings to the spectator in a unique and impressive way according to Vertical Wise. Nowadays, we see aerial arts all over the place. You can find it on popular social media apps, YouTube, obviously, and there's probably even a studio near you. If you want, you should go check that out. It's always a great way to exercise and to have a little bit of fun while doing it. Well, that's all I've got for the history of Ariel. I hope you've enjoyed and don't forget to drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you like content like this and want more of it. In the meantime, swing on over to my channel and watch some more of my videos for more deep dives into aerial arts. Catch you later!